Black lights and booze burn when I record for watch And every black like Troy Davis who never had a fair shot All black everything, everything black Culture over everything, y'all, we taking it back Black Welcome to Left of Black. I'm your host, Mark Anthony Neal. We're on location here in Durham, North Carolina, and joined by Professor Blair Kelly, Associate Professor of History at North Carolina State University, where she is also the Assistant Dean of Interdisciplinary Studies <laughs> and International Programs, and the author of Right to Ride, Streetcar Boycotts and African American Citizenship in the Era of Plessy versus Ferguson. How are you doing? Great to be here. So I'm looking at your bio. Um, and I'm looking at all the great stuff that you're doing at State and y your great scholarship. And at the bottom of your bio, it says, and Professor Kelly has 13,000 Twitter followers. It's way more than that. <laughs> you're looking at an old bio, sir. <laughs> but I see that it speaks so much to how the game has changed since we got in the game. Absolutely. <laughs> You know, that now you can't just dabble in social media. You have to have a real social media presence, right? Because there are going to be folks who are only going to know you, mm -hmm. right? You know, they're, they're not going to read your scholarship, mm -hmm. right? They, mm -hmm. they might see you on TV. They might hear you on NPR. But the way that they're most going to connect you, right, is you being in their Twitter feed. Talk about how social media has changed the game for the work that we do. I mean, I think it's interesting because I think it's important to be able to participate in conversations that are happening on social media. Um, you know, the phenomenon of black Twitter has been, yeah. you know, talked about over and over again. But I, I think, you know, there are many black Twitters. <laughs> yes. And in parts of the black Twitter that I participate in, I th I'm happy to be able to be there as a resource. Right for right. folks who are doing movement work in this generation to think about past movement work. I'm happy to be there as a resource for young scholars. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to be there as, a, as folks who just want to know more about history and have real questions and, and sincere questions and really don't know where to start. So it's, it's fun to make sure that the, the expertise that we have as scholars can be put to good use. And, and that's real because my own experience with Twitter is that folks are hungry for information yes. and knowledge, yes, right? And absolutely. if we're not there, mm -hmm. they're going to get whatever information they and will, knowledge. They will right? get it. So, so our expertise, <laughs> you know, our thoughts, you know, collectively need to be in that space for that reason. Yes. But once we're in that space, right, we also have to navigate other issues, right? Yes. So there have been several high-profile cases, you know, this year, primarily black women, mm -hmm. academics. Mm -hmm. Um, who've been called out by various nefarious entities Absolutely. on the right about some of their comments, you know, on Twitter in particular, and really put pressure on their institutions to have to respond to that. You know, how do we work through this particular dynamic? I think, you know, the, I can only speak to the principles that I have that guide me yeah. on Twitter. Um, I try not to speak in a way that I wouldn't speak in any classroom. Right. Right. I try to not make it personal. So there are not pictures of my children <laughs> or my husband on the Internet. Right. right. Because that that's my private life. Um, and that's a rule I have with my family. Right. Um, but I also do want to be personal and I do want people to know that I am human. Be approachable, accessible. Right. So just things, as you right. are a father on Twitter, I'm right. a mom on right. Twitter, I'm a wife on Twitter. Right. And I think it's important to represent the whole yeah. me, but but always as a professional person. But I mean, with that said, people can take things out of context. Right. People can take, you know, a single tweet and turn it into something that you really didn't mean for it to be. And and it can become something completely different. And so we're all dealing with the kind of world where uh, tiny things can become a firestorm storm in terms of who we are uh, as scholars and as people because, because the stakes are high. I mean, you see some of the young folks on Twitter, not even just academics, right? Um, and, and it's like these folks don't have filters. Yes. You know, there are things that are shared on social media that we would never think of yes. sharing outside of a very small, Absolutely. personal circle and then even then <laughs> well I mean you might sometimes some filters. Twitter feels personal right right so there are people that I've right. known on Twitter for five years right. who I know that they've been sick or that their parent passed right. or and, and I've shared you know when my mother died I shared that on Twitter and so that is very personal but I think 
sometimes I've gained from the very personal, and then sometimes folks are, are you know, the oversharing, right. classic thing. And, and, and I think finding the balance that works for you. Right. right. So I have friends that are on Twitter who show their pictures of their kids and their names and, and they feel free to do so. And, and, and I don't feel that way. But I think as long as you have your boundaries and your set of rules and you've thought about it and the kind of person you want to be in that space, um, then, you know, at least, you know, you've, you've thought about it going into it ahead but of time. Think about it this way. I mean, part of what social media has been really for this generation of up and coming scholars you know, they, they've all been attracted to the allure of the black public intellectual. Mm. Right? You know, what <laughs> Cornell was 20 years ago, Yes. what Mike was, what Bell was yes. for a time, what Melissa is now, yes. what Mark Lamont Hill is now. Yes. It's alluring, right? Yes. <laughs> you know, sure. it's like, and, 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 from and, a and it looks lucrative, <laughs> right? It does. It and does. it looks easy also it from, a, from, Evidently. from a distance. <laughs> And social media has seemed to given all those tools to anybody who wants to be a public intellectual. And you see, and I've watched people come up, right? right. I've watched people who were just on Twitter, and then they all of a sudden they are on TV. But not everybody's built for this, right? And, and no. how do you, how do we tell young folks to find that balance to, you know, where being a black public intellectual is not about being a black public, an intellectual celebrity, right? Yeah. Right, but yeah. but actually using the resources, your skill set, your expertise, to leverage, you know, your expertise publicly to be able to do a certain kind of labor on behalf of the work that you're committed to, which is one side of it, right? Yes. But also trying to find that balance with actually doing scholarship because yes. seventeen Twitter, seventeen thousand Twitter followers is not going to get you tenure. No, <laughs> <laughs> it may not get you much of anything. Right. I mean, <laughs> so, sometimes. Um, you know, it's interesting for me because I'm battling with this myself. I have I do a podcast called right. Historical Blackness that right. I really love doing, and then sometimes I feel like I don't have time to do that. Yes, right. And this is fun, and I don't even know where this is going and, and, and or if it's impactful. And you also know that if you don't do it, somehow you're going to be fall behind the game. Yes, <laughs> yes. So it right. makes you feel like oh, I want to do it because right. I mean right. stuff you, is happening. Right. and I want to speak, right. and then at the same time you're like, well. Maybe I really should work on this article or go to this right. conference or, you know, do these or things. Or get some sleep. Well, yeah, there's <laughs> or spend that. some time <laughs> with your children. Yes, there's that. <laughs> and so I think really finding what, what feeds you in this space. So I, I, I decided early on that I couldn't be Melissa Harris Perry. I couldn't yeah, be Mark yeah. Lamont Hill. Right, right, and I'm okay right, with right, that. Like right. I'm not up at night thinking, oh gosh, right. I really should be on, on TV every day. Right. Well, I'm happy where right. I am. I'm, I'm really happy to be a historian. Yeah. And so I always want that base to be there for me. And so for me, the guiding principle is when I have something really substantive to say and something that's burning in my heart right. from my expertise, right. then I feel excited about weighing in. But when I don't, I try not to speak. Because I think all of us have a place here, right? And if we do the thing that we're good at and the thing that excites us and the thing that feeds us and not worry about well, this person is making such and such for speaking engagements or is always on TV, and, and that sort of jealousy version of it. Right. Right. For me, it, it, it's right. about you know contributing right. and, and being that classic sort of right. old school black intellectual. And if you have something unique to bring to the conversation. Right? Yes. I mean, because that's the other thing, right? we're, we're flooded with information now, right? Yes. Everybody wants to rep their own magazine, wants to rep their own brand. Yes. You know, so we find ourselves reading 12 of the same articles. Yes, <laughs> yes. And right. I never want to write the same article. Right. And sometimes I've been, you know, I have a, a good friend who's an editor who's really well placed now. And there have been times where I'm like, I could write such and such. And then I see it. And I'm right. like, I'm I good. Like, I don't need to. Right. I'm good. I don't want right. to. I don't want to just pile on. I want to contribute something really special and make yeah. sure that it's impactful and, and I'm adding to it. But it, it is a tough conversation to have. And and you do see people who you're like, well, I could have done that. <laughs> but I mean, that's not that's not a place to work from, right? Right. Right. I could have right. done. I could have right. done all kinds of stuff. Right. But this is my path, and I need to be excellent in right. this path. Right. Yeah. You're watching Left of Black. We're joined by historian Blair Kelly, his associate professor of history at North Carolina State University. This summer, you know, when we saw the things go down with a few of our colleagues, um, young black women, uh, one who had to apologize, mm -hmm. you know, one who had a college president have to weigh in mm -hmm. on the situation, another one in which, you know, their former institution, you know, 
gave just enough information or not enough information yeah. <laughs> that in a way it, that right that it, it that it poisoned what actually was happening on the ground. If you could have had conversations, and I know you're going to be real about this, right? If you could have <laughs> conversations with some of these young scholars about what they're tweeting, how they tweet, right? How they're representing their intellectual capabilities in 140 characters, right? What do you say to them? I mean, I, you know, I don't want to backseat drive on this, right? right. Because I, I'm pretty sure I've tweeted something that if someone took out of context and ran up the hill with it, could be taken right. as some extremist view or something that's not representative of my larger work. And so, you know, I didn't read their whole feeds and I don't, right. I don't know. I, for, for me, what was important is I was asked to blog pretty early on, right. well before right. I had tenure. And I didn't do it. And, and it was um, Mark Lamont Hill who was like, oh, Blair, you oh, should yeah, really right. get on my site and you should block from me. You should, this right. is great. This is great. And I was like, I I'm good. I'm really <laughs> good. Because for me, making sure I had tenure and that right. I had at least a secure position right. from which to argue. And so there, there's an apparatus right. around you in the university system, supposedly, that uh, so supports you when you are a tenured professional and that you're more secure, you're more known, and it there would be higher costs. Right. And so the, the, I, for me, you know, being able to be in the classroom, being able to be an administrator, being able to be a black woman in those spaces is important and impactful. And so for me, I didn't want to, to write blogs and then trip up the thing I had been building, building for so long. For so long. And, and for young ones, I think it's a different world. Because I mean, you know, when I was in graduate school, we didn't have email at first. <laughs> and so it's a very different sort of, sort of circumstances. And so it must feel like, well, I have to have a Twitter account and I right. have to be here. But I, I'd, I'd say to everybody, you know, know what path you really want right. to march and what, you know, anybody can have a Twitter account. Not everybody can have tenure at a university. Not everybody can have the, the kind of Things impact that, that you, want, that you right. have from your book or right. the, the big research you're doing. And, and being honest about rules of engagement, I mean, Twitter has its own rules. Yes. Right, you know, and, and Twitter beef is one of those things that's, that's right in the middle of, yeah. you know, the rules of engagement on Twitter. And strange things happen. And, and <laughs> you know, there are young academics who get caught up in that world and yes. forget, you know, that they still have to answer to this other world that pays their bills. Yes. That will give them stability, will give them health care. I, yes. mean, just, just, I mean, just, just being, re and it's not about being timid. Yes. And not speaking truth to power in this space, but, but also knowing that you still need to represent yourself. And picking your battles. And picking your battles, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So not everything that happens on Twitter do I need to weigh in on if I'm not passionate about. I have people who are, I am friendly with and who I support. I have people who I don't support those same people who I also follow and also right. am friendly with. And so as long as you are not abusive or misogynistic or you know use terrible language, I, I'm, I'm here to, to, to <laughs> chat with you. Right, right, right. I'm here to talk with you and figure out what's going on and hear from folks. And I, you know there are people who are really waging war against things on Twitter that, right. that I do think are important. Like, right. So when I first got on Twitter, I, I, I did not know what I needed to know about um, trans identity. Right, oh, we're all, right. Right? <laughs> that and and changed the there game were some angry us, people right. on Twitter who taught me, so who, right. where I was like, whoa, what? It, and so I just pulled back and I got some books and right. I sat and down and I read and I listened right. to people and I listened for a few years right. before I right. was like, okay, so I'm glad that those folks were there and angry to make me accountable so that now That's that great. when I know to right. say black lives matter, I know that black trans lives matter right. too, awesome. right? right? And right. so, right. and then that, that when I say black lives matter, I mean all, all of those right. folks. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm glad to be educated by the, the folks who are fed up, the, the folks who are frustrated. And, and, and so I, as much as, you know, there are folks who are, they're doing their own thing and I don't have to participate in it, but I can learn from it. Right. And I'm appreciative of the folk who are, are waging those, those, those fights yeah. and doing interesting things. What are you working on these days? Huh, I'm working on two projects, <laughs> supposedly. <laughs> 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 um, I'm working on an edited volume about Anna Julie Cooper okay. with my friend. Um, Melissa Harris Perry, yeah. um, and so I'm, I'm an editor. I need to get that in, <laughs> and then I'm working on a, a book project, and I'm thinking about the politics of Black motherhood uh, for for mothers who have lost their children, and centering around wow. Mamie Till's life, because wow. I'm really t tremendously interested in um, the, not only uh, the legacy of what she suffered, but how she reshaped what yeah. we know about Black motherhood 
and black childhood because of the sacrifices that and, she makes as a political so actor. It's so relevant to what's happening Absolutely. now. Absolutely, right? you know, yeah. When we see these mothers, Yeah. right? And the fact that they've been able to build some sort of bond amongst themselves to yes. kind of work through. And I've been inspired by the Till family themselves right. and their willingness to re-engage these questions, which right. must be right. very painful and very difficult and very traumatic. Uh, for them to do so, but they've been willing to do so in the face of what we, we're seeing now. And so I'm, I'm really hoping to connect with them and to talk with them and really think this through historically and in, in a contemporary way. You've been watching Left of Black. I'm Mark Anthony Neal. We've been on location here in Doe, North Carolina, joined by one of our favorite guests, historian Blair Kelly, Associate Professor of History at North Carolina State University. Thanks for joining us, Blair. Thanks for having me. Black lights and booze burn when I record for watch. And every black like Troy Davis who never had a fair shot. All black everything, everything.